The green lights on. Anyway, this is a joint meeting of the Rockport City Council and the Charter Review Commission. Scheduled for this time, we are in session. We'll have a roll call from the council to establish quorum. Ward one. Here. Ward two. Here. Ward three. Ward four. Mayor here. We do have a quorum. Mr. Chairman, does your commission have a quorum present? Thank you. We do have a quorum for both bodies. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda. This time, comments will be limited to three minutes will be taken from the audience from persons who have signed the speaker's card located at the table in the back of the training room, the service center, delivered to the city secretary before the meeting begins, or written comments received by 4 p.m. on the day of the meeting. Or on any agenda item or any subject matter, they will be read and summarized in the minutes of the meeting. Persons wishing to address the council who have registered using the citizen participation form will have up to three minutes to speak. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, council may not discuss or take action on any item that has not been posted on the agenda. While civil public criticism is not prohibited, disorderly conduct or disturbance of the peace is prohibited by law will be calls for the chair to terminate the offender's time to speak. I have two cards. First card from Jeff Hutt of 2201 Prairie. If you'll come to the microphone, give your name and address again. You've got three minutes. Doesn't matter. Um, last week, um, I noticed that when you guys were settling the way you guys were going to do things, that there was no avenue by which citizens could submit recommendations for you guys to consider for charter amendment changes. And it'd be nice if y'all would up, like adopt some sort of process where you could at least look at it and take it into consideration. Um, and then the second thing is last week, y'all heard, for the first time ever, y'all heard changes to the charter, and you made, made a recommendation on it. Now, I don't know much, but I think like constitutions made in haste don't make good constitutions, and a charter is a constitution. So I'd make a suggestion that if you decide that you're going to have a you're going to, there's going to be a recommended change or something to talk, or the, the recommended, the actual vote for the recommendation or the not is followed up in the meeting afterwards to give y'all time to think about it, to give y'all time to hear from the constituents who you represent, Ward 2, rock on, and then to have like, get, so get a better, but voting, listening to it in five, ten minutes, turn around and make a recommendation is a lot. And the second thing, I ask you to do is to, you rock port on time, sir, to build in liberty to this, a, a charter is a constitution. You want to build in as much liberty as, as you can. In other words, last week y'all voted on a recommendation to change the annexation laws. It'd be better if you guys would change the annexation laws to make it where you had to have 100% property approval to be annexed. That way, no matter what happened in the state law, we would always be given that right. We should be, citizens of a community should be scared that TML is trying to annex land and trying to grow, that's what they do. So any of these recommendations that you are given to follow the state laws that can be changed, we should be weary of. I'm not for, I'm not for everything, I'm just for bad ideas. So write within to the charter as much freedoms and as much liberty as you can. Make it where it's easier for us to that we can um, also have petitions for not only ordinances but proposals, proclamations, Reference. referendums. No, for like resolutions. Make it where over the last course of the, the course of the last four years, 
you cannot say that the city of Rockport is worse off today than it was like four years ago. Citizen participation have, has made things better. It has brought a light. It has brought you a new city uh, city manager. It has been that right that into it. Thank you, Mayor, City Council, and Commission members. Um, kind of hard to follow Jeff Hutt. Uh, he's quite um, a patriot um, who um, values the citizens first. And so um, last week I got to sit with you throughout your Charter Review Commission, and I'm a little bit concerned, and I'm going to make some recommendations. Um, <clears throat> first of all, you have no idea, the citizens have no idea before they come to the meeting what will be discussed in your section review. I understand that you all received an email sometime and you know what it is, but there is not another commission or another board that the city of Rockport has beside, even the tree ordinance has an agenda packet prior to the meeting. So it, I don't think it could be that hard. You've already got the changes um, that are recommended by staff to put an agenda packet together um, so that the citizens have a chance to review it, so you have a chance to review it. There were some um, statutes that were quoted last week. Um, Mr. Hutt talked about it a little bit, but you all didn't have a chance to see those statutes. Y'all were rushed through a legal contract with your citizens. This is supposed to govern how our city works and how you interact with your, uh, your citizens. And so you did miss some things. Um, is specifically um, an opportunity to provide more protection for your um, citizens on the uh, annexation. Um, there was some, a piece that was taken out. Y'all were rushed through it. You said, well, we're taking it out because we're going to follow the legislation. Well, the charter should protect us regardless of what the legislation does because that can change. Um, and so it could have easily just said with um, no annexation without consent, just like he said, of all the property owners. Um, but instead, that was all taken out, and now the city's going to follow the legislation. Of course, you have to follow it, but the legislation can change. So, um, so please uh, try to get us an agenda packet, because we have no idea really what you're going to talk about tonight. So citizens really cannot uh, provide any input at all. Um, and you can see that we care enough to be here, and we're committed. Um, because we don't know what you're going to talk about. We don't, we, you already have the packet, but we don't. And so we get the three minutes before your section by section review comes up, but we don't know what we're talking about. We don't know what sections we're going to give input on. So council, you're going to, you, this is a joint meeting. This is something I think you, you can give input. Anytime um, that there's more transparency and more opportunity to work together is an opportunity for us to be better as a community, right? Because um, we all value each other. And so um, please give us an agenda packet ahead of time so that we can give valid input during the appropriate time. Because now, unless you recognize me, I can't give valid input. Thank you. Next time on the agenda, is receive comments from the city council. Before we do that, I want to recognize the fact I understand Donna Townsend is going to have to leave before the meeting is over. Okay, well, we'll get around to that then. I think we'll have plenty of time. Um, what I want to do is this. I'm going to suggest that as we look at the PowerPoint presentations that have been put together, section by section, we go to each individual and see who has comments they would like to make. And these, again, are... These comments are concerns that we have, uh, things that we think might be looked into and so forth. So this is not an action thing that we're trying to do. We're discussing things that we look at when we see the charter and concerns may show up over some level and what y'all want to do about it. We are suggesting these are things that might be looked at. So if that is suitable with y'all, we will go to the PowerPoint and go section by section on what comments people might have. So we Okay, I saw one in my computer. I don't know where it came from. I think that might be last week's. Okay.
Okay, it just said. How, however, we do want to counsel to provide guidance for your um, committee section you're specifically concerned about. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. Not on. Um, <laughs> anything that you want to discuss specifically or you want them to concentrate on? We kind of wanted okay. you to relay that to them now. Um, since, since that thing I looked at didn't was not what we were fixing to use, we can do that. What we might ought to do is just start with Ward 1, come this way, and look at the sections that we made notes on, and I we'll think go that through them that way. Perfectly right. acceptable. We, yeah, we, uh, the last time we went on through a couple of sections, three sections that didn't have a lot of what, what I call meat on them, uh, the, uh, so we didn't address we didn't address like articles uh, 11 through uh, 7 or 8 last week. Um, and we wanted to, before we got into some of the meteor sections, like election, city council, qualifications, okay. that kind of thing, we thought it might be good for council to provide their guidance to the uh, commission as to what areas y'all really wanted sure. them to take a look at. We can yep. do that. Would it, would it be uh, okay to put the minutes of the last meeting up and then we can kind of scroll through as that meeting that we went through? Would that be a way to do it? Or? We don't have them here. Oh, okay. Um, but we're, those items we are, were specifically very slim and, like you said, unmeeting, so we were kind of wanting going forward. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, if you have anything from those that you want, we'll revisit it certainly. But this is your chance to relate to them for the entirety of the, um, of the process. I mean, you can talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, but in a public sure. forum. This is for you to relay your expectations to them. Okay. We'll just do Sorry, this. Sorry, we didn't lay that out for you very well, we'll do I guess. This by award. Katie, what have you got that you have concerns on? We'll start with you and come this way, and then we'll get back to them. So what concerns you saw in the charter? Tell us about them. I have two pages of concerns, I'm, and that's the short story. I'm sitting here with a smile on my face. Go right ahead. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to the big time important ones. The rest of them will catch up along the way. Article three, which is that one. I don't know her name right now. Uh, city something, city council. The issues I have in here are that um, we serve two year term limits for a total of 10 consecutive years. Two years on council is just enough time to learn the job. I now am coming up on the end of my second term, I mean second year of my first term, and I actually feel competent. It took me a while to get here. You don't get on, on the council, boom, you understand how everything works. And with elections in May, that council person, their second meeting, they start looking at budget, which they've never seen before or looked at it with the eyes you need to with the council. So along with that in Article 6 is when we hold the election. And I've got a thing I'm going to pass out here real quick for everybody. Take one, pass it down. I'll just take one. Talking and I'll pass it no, I got it. Doug, could you take one and pass it down? Sure. I went ahead and you guys know me, I'm facts and figures. I'm going to bring you the data, bring you the receipts. Well, here it is. It is very expensive for this city to hold an election in May. Taking my election as the example, um, that was the year that uh, Brad and I got elected. There were just over or just under 600 votes cast. Each vote cost the city $58. Okay, that's a whole lot of money for me to get 104 votes. So I think that's wrong. Now, if you look at on there, then the November 2020 election, which is when we moved the mayor and Keith Allen out to November because of COVID concerns, and everybody was amicable to that, nobody was pushed into it, it was $3.05 a vote. So doing the votes in May does not make fiscal sense at all, especially if we only have 600 out of 
3,100 eligible vote. Where, where's the cost savings? I mean, elections are important. Yes. You know, I'm not arguing that. I'm arguing why we're paying so much money to have an election every year in May. Rockport in and of itself has a lot of transplants from out of state, me being one of them. I had never heard of a May election until I got here. Maybe that's why we don't get enough people to participate. People don't participate in May elections. They participate in presidential elections and governor elections, which are November, you know, they're, you know, like this time there, it was 2020 and 2022. That's when people participate. Otherwise, I'm just whistling Dixie. And I can't, I, I don't, this money is ridiculous. That's a whole lot of money for a whole lot of nothing, in all honesty. Because I didn't get, I got what, 5% of my ward to vote? Woohoo! Okay. So that's what I would like you all to take a look at is, is go, taking us to four year terms, moving the election to November. I am undecided on what I'd like to see if, there, if we keep term limits or get rid of them. I don't know. I'm, 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 so keep what? term limits, because right now we're term limited for 10 consecutive years. A long time. Yep, it's a long time. But I would like those looked at very closely and how we do, not how we do elections, but when, why, and for who. My suggestion would be is that we do not elect the mayor in the same year that we elect the county judge. I think those should be opposite if we go to four year. So the mayor would end up being on the presidential cycle since the judge is on the off cycle. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. You guys will see my comments sprinkled throughout as we go forward. A lot of it is um, um, language. A lot of it is, oh, well, we don't do that. A lot of that is statute changes. So it's more mechanics, vice changes. Um, and I will, Stop there for now. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to thank each of you for your willingness to serve. Um, I know that's a huge commitment from each of you, and, and many of you have um, lots of other priorities, and we thank you for it. Um, I guess, you know, most of my comments are, are, are relatively high level and, and, and will also feed off of some of what Katie said, but um, I want to thank the council as well. Uh, this process has been well overdue. Um, as you all know, we have a responsibility to do this on a regular basis, and it hasn't been done. So I applaud the council and uh, city staff for kind of getting us caught up, if you will, and uh, thank you for that. Um, I do encourage um, every opportunity for continued citizen participation um, and transparency. I also I'm empathetic to the fact that this is a fast moving schedule and large agenda packets for receipt and review are not always gonna be possible. Um, we have, I believe, plenty of stop gaps that have been identified by our council and staff to ensure that a decision you make is not a final decision. Each of these meetings is just an opportunity for you to take incremental steps and identify what you need to come back to visit. So although I know you took action last week, I'm confident that that's gonna come back and continue to be revisited as we receive additional comments. Um, annexation has um, always been a hot topic. There's no doubt that has to come back. I will state that I believe that our charter should be reflective of the current state statutes. And that's part of this process is to bringing it into an alignment with the current ability and, and restrictions um, that a municipality of our size are faced with. So some of those won't necessarily be fun discussions, but at the end of the day, the state law precedes ours and we should find opportunities for, for full alignment there where appropriate. Um, I ask that our citizens work with us to help provide trust into this, this process. Uh, we're all fully committed to doing the right thing. And if there's opportunities for improvement, we wanna hear that. 
um, but I'm confident that no one that's that's volunteered for this position is going about it with the intent to do wrong. So I know we're all in the right place, and, and I hope we all continue to show that mutual respect for each other. Um, I share um, uh, my priorities with, with Ms. Jackson and that I think uh, the most amount of input I've received or heard rather from the community is related to when we do the elections in terms, term length and term limits. Um, I can say that I, I don't have a, a exceptionally strong opinion on any of those three nuggets. I, I look forward to the discussion, both amongst you as commission members, the council and, and, our, and our public. Those are probably the, what's going to guide most of our conversations, I believe, as priorities. Um, I have worked with other communities who have gone through similar conversations. When you move to a November election, the cost of those elections are less expensive from a, from a city management standpoint, and that's exceptionally important. But for the candidates, the time and the financial impact on candidates does increase because they have to penetrate all of the other political activities that are occurring in that November midterm election cycle. Again, it's just something for consideration, but cost of ads, getting ad space, getting street time, getting um, the opportunities to address the, the citizens at a local level is becomes a different type of political prioritization when you're also mingling with state and national level bipartisan issues. This is a nonpartisan uh, council. So it should be a consideration and look forward to that conversation. Term lengths, um, we've had numerous elections over the last handful of years, many years, where there may be only one candidate or maybe two candidates who have thrown their name in the hat um, for a two-year commitment. I'm concerned about what a four-year commitment may look like whether folks are gonna be willing to sign on for that. I, I don't know, many of you have more experience in that than I do. Um, the uh, term limits, I'm a, I, I do support limitations. Of course, our current charter is a 10 year, but it's only 10 year consecutive. You can set out and come back, um, which I think is a good pause, um, probably for the community and for the council. Um, Again, I, I, I won't tell you today where I, I firmly believe in all three of those because, I, again, I think there's um, pros and cons to all of those decisions. I suspect that if you talk to any council member in Corpus Christi, although much bigger, much different issues, most of them will not support the fact that they move to November. Um, there have been many that have been quite vocal about that not being a great decision. Their decision was largely based on the cost of the city, and later they've come back that the council members really struggled to be able to have a local conversation that, that wasn't, again, charged with a bipartisan election with the midterms. So something for consideration. Sir? I was writing a note to Katie, but, but I really would like to go back to the annexation thing that we talked about last week. Uh, I, Jeff said 100%, we'll never get 100% of anything. But I think that it should be in there that they provide all of the services that they're supposed to before they annex more country. Um, yeah, and, and that's another, again, I think annexation is something that we'll need to come back and for further discussion. There's a lot within the statute that's required. I live in one of those subdivisions that was annexed a very, very long time ago and do not have all the city services and received an inquiry just this last week from another citizen from a different part of the city who's facing the same thing. It's an issue um, that needs to be addressed. But future annexation, I think the, the state law has, has been pretty clear about what that process is. Um, again, as a general statement, I'd like to see our charter in alignment with the current laws. Our charter can be re revised just like state laws can be revised. Um, I, I want to say I want it to be in full alignment, <laughs> and then I'm sure there's going to be something that comes up like annexation where I might falter, but, but I, I think if, if that's our path forward to say we're not going to deviate um, uh, in a way that's in conflict with the state law, I think we'll be in, in a better place. Um, I also like that our charter is 
um, simple. It's a relatively short, easy read. As you look at other charters, it gets very, very complicated very quickly. I think one of the examples that council provided last week, um, a section from another city that said the same thing ours did took 10 sentences and ours took three. And so where it can be simple is, is best, but obviously um, must be clear to the voters and to the residents of this community. Um, with that, Mayor, I'll, I'll yield the rest of my time to the other council person. All right. Uh, piggyback on everybody else. Thank you all for, for <coughs> volunteering to be on this commission. And, uh, and thank you for the, the citizen input we've uh, received so far. And look forward to seeing some more of it going down the road. Uh, going through or watching last last uh, last week's meeting was a little rough on YouTube, but uh, uh, suffered through it for what I could. Uh, but anyway, uh, moving forward, uh, I do like some of the things y'all y'all accomplished last week. Uh, the citizen input, the the nine minutes and, and stuff like that. I think that does give. Uh, the ability for a little bit more input than just the three minutes. Uh, now, uh, you know how it comes on the agenda item. That may we may look at that again. I don't know. Um, I know no one wants to be here till three o'clock in the morning. But um, but I think if if any input on the items that we we receive in the agenda is, is good. Uh, also, um, the annexation. Uh, I was reading through some other city charters and. And coming into the state state law, if we follow state law, you know it's only voluntary annexation now; it can't be forced annexation. But in some of the uh, charters I was reading, was that if uh, if in ten or a, a time period, uh, the ones I was noticing was ten years. If you if the city does not provide services within ten years to that annexed area, they are de-annexed from the city uh, due to the fact that we're collecting your taxes but not providing the services. I think that's that's not a bad idea because uh, you know if you're not getting what you what you're paying for then why are we paying for it uh, one of the things I'd uh, go along with what Katie and Danielle both also said on the election uh, I know Corpus did go to the November and, and uh, they've had some complaints about it some of our other uh, cities are smaller areas uh, ha have done gone to the November election and most mostly due to cost savings uh, for the city and I haven't heard from a few of the guys I've talked to, guys and girls I've talked to, have not suffered the same uh, ill will or complaints, I should say. Um, term limits, I'm all for. Uh, I think if we're here for a lifetime employment, then we could get stagnant. And, and uh, uh, I just don't think we, we want career politicians here in the city. Uh, the the term, you know, uh, two years, three years, four years, whatever it may be, uh, I do recognize Danielle's concern of uh, there's not exactly people beating on the doors to come do this job. Uh, I don't know if it's the pay or, or what, but um, there's just not a whole lot of people that, that, that beat down the doors to, to come do this. So if we change it to four years, is that does it even change? It does it even get worse? I, I don't have the crystal ball. I don't know, but I do agree with what uh, Katie says that you know two years, uh, you you get elected in May, uh, you come in and, and you, you've got a budget sitting on your lap that you don't know anything about. You weren't through the budget process, the workshops. Uh, it, maybe if you had some forethought, you sit in those as a citizen, but um, not always possible. Uh, so you're you're asked to make a vote on a budget that you don't really that you didn't know much about. So if you get elected in November, uh, you almost have the whole year to work to that budget process. Um, and then again, a, a two-year cycle. Uh, you really are just getting your feet wet with how staff, how the city works, how everything works, and then then you're up for re-election. Uh, so. I, I would I would agree that maybe a longer term would be appropriate, um, and I would I would consider any kind of input that we had on whether it be a May or November election. Uh, it, it is expensive to run an election, and uh, as Katie, you know, miss miss uh, information over here uh, likes to kill us with uh, with info. 
I mean, it, it's expensive to run the election and, and, and just cost for votes and, and I can see what she's, where she's coming from. Uh, versus if we did a November election, obviously it's a higher turnout and uh, with the, the cost is shared more equally across the board. Um, what else did I have? I guess we'll, we, uh, when we get to today, are we going through articles uh, four and five or anything? No. Uh, the, let's see, let me get to, sorry. It's where, it, the article where we deal with uh, city, city manager, city secretary, uh, city attorneys, uh, city engineers. Uh, Want to take a good look at that and also ensure that we are following our charter as far as the the uh, the review process of the annual reviews that we give those uh, those personnel and or entities if it's say it's the, uh, the city attorney or the city engineer since we do not have them in-house uh, you know just want to make sure we're, we're taking a good look at those and following the charter so when we get to that point if I would ask you all to, to really look at that and make sure we're make sure we are doing our jobs um, Part of the charter. Uh, I think that's about all I have for now. Mayor, I'll yield back. Thank you. Well, like others, I want to thank you all for doing this. It's not an easy thing to do, especially when you catch flack from a lot of folks thinking that you're fixing to try to set down and establish a lot of brand new rules that you can set on your own. And the fact of the matter is you will work through this process and you will come up with things that appear to be needing change or being deleted or whatever, and when you get all the process done, you'll get us a document that the council will pass action on that will put it into an election if there are changes to be made and people get to vote on it, which is the way it should be. The people should get to vote, which is an important process. Um, and sitting, looking, and reading through the charter, I, I told Katie a little earlier when I got to the part about budgets and like that, I read about three sentences and went back and read them again because I coun't remember what the first one said when I got to the third one because it was a lot of, of, of legal speech. And I think that is probably as it needs to be in technical aspects of the charter. However, having been around a really long time and feeling it a little bit more every once in a while, uh, Remembering the things that I have heard people in city council meetings come in and be unhappy about and be concerned with, first of all, as everybody else has said, annexation. The state law has changed drastically on annexation. So if we sit here and tell you what it should be, we're going to get it wrong because I've read it and I don't remember all of it exactly either. But the fact is you're going to have legal advice coming in. And, and you can't go in and force people to be annexed into the city and, and then forget that they're there or whatever. So we know that that has to have some changes because it doesn't match state law. One of the other things that I saw in here that I can remember people being concerned about is what kind of authority do you have and what kind of practice should you have dealing with the extraterritorial jurisdiction? What can you do in the ETJ? Uh, do we go out and do building code enforcement and so forth? Do we go out and inspect buildings, be sure they meet building standards? Can you do that? Maybe, but do we want to? Uh, is that the kind of thing that the city should be doing? So we need to look at what is our authority and what, ex what authority we expect to exert into the ETJ. It, it's an important thing to know, especially when people are sitting back being concerned, as we were a second ago, about annexation and so forth. So I would look at what we do in our ETJ. Um, Looking into some of the things that I have seen come up a couple of times over the years, if the city council determined that it was necessary for them to investigate some sort of problem that had been brought to their attention and action needed to be taken, they need to find out exactly what the situation has been, what the problem was, if there is a real problem, if there's a crime violation, if there's a moral violation, whatever. The Charter says that we will pass ordinances if people become obstinate and they won't testify before the group when they're doing that. It says we have ordinances for that, and I looked and I can't find them anywhere. I don't know that it has happened in the last 30 years, I think in the last 33 or 4 possibly, that the council did some investigative work. 
and they can do the things it says. You can take statements. You can have people testify. There are things you can do, but if there's not a penalty, if you don't do it, well, it doesn't mean a whole lot. And ordinances are what it takes to establish that, so we should look and see if those exist. I can't find them. Uh, finally, I'm like Brad, I looked at what the charter says about the city attorney and, and the city engineer, and I noticed that in the engineering section it said that the city engineer can be talking about an engineering firm as opposed to one person, and I thought the same language might go into the city attorney spot where you have, you have a firm instead of a, an individual. I see no problem with that, and I just happened to notice because they were close together and nearly on the same page. But those kind of things. I appreciate the work Katie did in coming up with the elections, I see that our elections do cost us a lot and there needs to be something done to work out a way that we either don't have as many or that they're cheaper and you can't make them cheaper, everything goes up. Uh, so, so changing those to however many we have to have would be a benefit. I wish that having read through that thing again, and I have read it before, having read through it again that I could come up with something that would answer all the questions I might have had. But I'm sure y'all will be able to take care of that because you're going to sit down with that being your primary thing to do for the next two or three or four weeks or six weeks or eight weeks or whatever. So that we're through by January, if I remember correctly, so we can get it all done. I, I'm sure that y'all can do that. I appreciate the fact that you are willing to and I hope that when you're going through this, when you see something that you have a concern about, instead of thinking maybe it's not too important, ask the legal person and get an answer for you. I appreciate the folks that spoke on the subject today. Uh, I understand y'all's concerns. And I hope that by the time the process is over, we can all sit back and smile and get, give something to the public that if we are going to make changes, they can vote on it and determine whether it should be done or not. But I thank you, and I don't have any other comments on it. So we can we can start going through another section with you guys if you want tonight, or y'all can. Huh? Sure. You've got twenty minutes, so. Yeah. Oh, you want to have? If, go ahead. You have comments for them for council. Okay. So my, my uh, concern is the citizens not feeling like they have a path to communicate to uh, our commission, which I would assume would be through our council persons and through the city secretary to communicate to us. Is there any other way that could be suggested to communicate to us? Because I know that you don't want to put our information out directly, right? I mean, well, can we get them city email addresses? Like get a, them city email addresses? Correct. Like a, uh, we can do that. We can uh, do that quickly, and they can go directly to their ward representative or their councilman. But if the if citizen input just wants to go directly to the charter review, then, right, right? That's what I'm saying. We can get everybody here set up on a city email. I'm looking at Bob for yes. Okay. And then... You, you can receive input that way, or you can go through your city council member. Everything will funnel through the city secretary. She'll have it at the meeting, all the input. So. That, that way, I mean, it's still, yep. they're, they're part of the charter, so it's still an open records request. Yep. So, but that way, your personal email address isn't being used for We'll get you a city, city business tomorrow. There's also a uh, public hearing towards the, towards the end of the process that is uh, set up as well for citizens to come in and comment uh, before you all adopt a final report. Absolutely, absolutely. I just don't want, I don't want to have to readdress things. If the community can give us the input as, um, as they look through the charter and then uh, give us their input so when we get to those sections, we can take their input and use that for our determinations and our, and our suggestions instead of having to go back every time. So. 
the I think the email addresses for us would be great, and then um, putting out the uh, the city um, e emails to everyone that is receiving them to say that this is a new way to communicate with the charter going on because I have seen some traffic in citizen concern. So I think the emails will be good. Well, Deidre, the emails won't do much good if part of the agenda package doesn't include what we're going to go over to the next meeting, which was already that's raised. That's what we're saying. We're going to, you know, we start and we're going to go until the, the meeting's done. So we've re reviewed and gone through the entire chart. So we can keep going. If you guys want us to break it up into sections and say, but we don't know if a section is going to take you 10 minutes or if it's going to take you two hours. So that's why we have several queued up. Now, we can put out an agenda that has everything and knock them off as we as we do them so you know at least we're not going to be revisiting those but we can put every article on there and knock off the ones we've addressed if you want i think that would be great to have an idea of which agenda uh, which articles that we're going to go through and then if we go through more we go through more and then we can just correct that moving forward um but i mean i have all my notes, I read through the whole charter and I have all my notes for everything. So if anybody in the public wanted to send their suggestions for Article 9 and we're not getting that until, you know, three weeks from now, I mean, we'll still take that input. Um, yeah, and, it'll still be considered whenever yeah. you send it in, whenever we get to it. Your yeah. input will be considered with that. And same with the public input at the beginning of the meeting. If your three minutes is about a, a different article down the road, we're taking notes on that, to, not necessarily for that night's um, agenda items, but if somebody can make it and discuss an article that we're not discussing that night, that's perfectly fine. And I'd just like to make a comment. I'm sorry that someone talked about how quick this process is. This is a catch-up game. The um, Charter says that we need to do this every five years. I don't know how long it's been since it's been done. So we are doing a very fast paced review um, to, to catch up. And then, you know, the next process might take eight months. It might take six months. It might take a whole year. Um, but we need to get on track on that five year track. And with the election coming up and calling the election, it's a very compressed schedule. And we're going to be asking a lot of you guys. and. We're going to be asking a lot of the citizens that want to have input because basically you've got what three months to get the whole charter read and get all of your all of your thoughts together, and we we understand that. So it may um, not happen. It may it may not happen. It may not. You know, we may decide that we can't do this, and we may have to call uh, November and put it on November. If you guys determine that, we've we've discussed that. Um, it may be too rushed. We're going to do what's logical and thoughtful. And then we're going to consider all of the input that's sent in, regardless of when it's sent in. So, well, Vanessa, my worry is we don't have a packet that goes out to tell citizens what's going to be on the agenda that we're going to talk about. If it's not on the agenda, we can't talk about it. So, if somebody shows up wanting to talk about a section that we're coming to later, we can't respond. We can't even address it amongst ourselves. So. I think there's a little disconnect in the process of providing information to the public and then being able to accept their feedback when we're actually talking about the thing. Real quick. So, where we could, if we could truly do an agenda, an agenda packet for each meeting. And now, and it may say that, you know, unfortunately, I don't know if you put, like you say, put the whole charter on there, right. you know, all the articles, and then if we don't get to it, Article nine that day, right. then we just, it moves to the next one. That, that, I mean, that, I guess that's the question uh, is because we don't know from meeting to meeting whether Article nine, for instance, is going to take three minutes because or, there's no changes or three hours or yeah. three hours, yeah. and then and so if we so if it takes three minutes and we and and three sections take a total of nine minutes, and we've limited ourselves on the agenda, then we we've, we've set ourselves back a little bit. Is there so it's a, I mean, it, so I mean, it's definitely doable to do it that way, um, if that's what if that's what the commission wants to do and the council wants to do, uh, it just to be aware that that is that is a potentially limiting factor. Well, I, I, but I I feel like their concern is uh, what may be on the agenda and what may be on the agenda packet. Citizens may not be able to get the, give the input 
correctly to the to the commission. And then if it's not, if someone comes up to speak to them, it's not on the agenda, they can't really discuss it. They may have to just write their notes and go the next week or two weeks or we three weeks it, later. If we have our emails and they want to send word to us, there just won't be a discussion. We'll receive it. We know what, it's, uh, what article they're, they're concerned with. <clears throat> so we just have to keep that to us until it's publicly able to be spoken, correct? I think, or that doesn't happen at all. I think we could put the whole, every article on there, and then as we discussed and finalized, we remove them. So you have the ability to have back and forth discussion on any article in there that has not already been completed with citizen input or you know email received, whatever. You can discuss discuss it because every article will be listed on there that is yet to be addressed. Does that sound acceptable, or is it too much? What What's your direction? I think I don't have one, so I will just speak loudly. I think it is better than what we have, okay. which is the citizens receiving nothing. At least now they'll have a, a charter and they'll propose changes, and we run through whatever we're going to run through, and they can decide which ones they want to talk about. And we either get to them or we don't, if we don't, then they carry over to the next meeting. But at least they're getting some information as to what it is we're actually going to do before they get here so that they can provide comments. So unless you send in your proposed changes, we really don't, I mean, we will have a few, the things that they've discussed and the things that we've discussed. We can put those out. Like the last meeting, you provided us with the language, the proposed language, and things we need right. to change. That's what we went through. It seems to me that that's what the citizens ought to be provided so they can see the same thing, so that when we get to that item, they can then speak. That means you have to go through the whole charter with all your proposed changes, so be it. But otherwise, right. we seem to be saying, we'll show up and speak, but they don't know what the hell they're speaking about. Okay. But then understand that you're not limited to what we're proposing. You guys are going to propose changes that we have not seen. I understand, but it's still that. on the agenda. Yep. It has to be on the agenda before we can deal with it. Okay. I mean, maybe I'm just the only one that sees their no, disconnect I, there. I agree. I think it's worth right. I mean, it's it's kind of a difficult thing, which is like when we were starting out here. We said we're going to look at what these articles one at a time and try to talk to them today. It would be difficult to do that because some of them, as I say, when you're going through those things, there's a lot of words in there. But the people need, I agree with you, they need to know what it is we're going to talk about so I know whether I want to go down there and talk to them or not. Um, I don't know that it wouldn't be possible, and I won't say that it would because I'm not once going to sit down trying to figure out how to do it. But if one of y'all could, if you can sit down and look at them and determine as best you can. For instance, the first about four sections are probably not going to be real hard to go through. You can go through those. They're, they're not technical. They're feelings things. You know, annexation. I don't like that. Don't do it anymore. Well, we might do it sometime, but only under these circumstances because the law changed. And some of those things would not be real difficult. You could probably look at it and do it in an hour. But if some of the others, again, once you get ideas from yourselves and from the people you hear from on what they want to talk about, if you get more things on one subject, you know it's going to be necessary to take a little longer on it. And I don't think you're going to get it done in two months anyway. If we put the agenda out there and we say approximately through six and let's just say we get to five just because right. we're done we're tired whatever the next agenda we pick it up from six to whatever whatever it's going to be you just table number six and but you it's start approximate there. because you don't know the time and the hours that we're going to put into it so can we use that word in a way and that way we know it's out there you all get your idea you can all read on it have your thoughts do your comments we're all ready, and here we go, approximately. It's the only thing I can come up with, because you're right. We don't know if it's going to be a two-hour session, or one-hour session, or what. So if you guys will let us take a crack at it, 
Next meeting we'll have something that hopefully looks more like what you're discussing, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll refine it from there if you guys are okay with that. Sounds good to me. What do you all think? What do you think? Yes? Yes. I will. I will. You have less than three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it real quick. Uh, I love the direction you're going. Thank you, Mr. Wagnon. I think you're right on the right page. Uh, last week, I asked the city manager, could she just give us an agenda packet or just a list that she's already solicited changes from you all and from city staff? So they kind of already know what the recommendations are. Just put the whole charter out there with whatever the recommendations are, and we'll go through it. We'll get it done quick. It'll be much more efficient for you. I uh, promise. And it'll take less time. And so, thank you. Uh, just put the whole chart with all the staff and council recommended changes. And I understand y'all are going to come up with your own ideas, and we will too. So, I think it'll be more efficient. So, the agenda for next week's meeting has already been posted, but um, we'll still do a packet that will have information that backs it up. Okay? I have to go. The packet has already been posted, but the packet wasn't being made. It's not yeah. yeah. Anything else? We have had the discussion. I appreciate the public and the things you had to say. Appreciate y'all. I think as we start having, after you have your first public meeting, you'll have a better idea how the rest of them are going to work out, even if you're there for a few hours. Uh, but I appreciate it. I appreciate the folks that came and talked. Thank you, Council. I have, if there is nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I have a motion, second. motion second. We're adjourned. Yes, ma'am.